Hello and welcome to an Envato Touch Plus tutorial. I'm Andy Pordila, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create certain parts of a design system in Figma. Now, recently, I designed this uh, minimal portfolio WordPress theme. Uh, this will eventually be coded, and you'll be able to download it as well. Uh, because of that, I wanted to create a design system for it that will help me as well as the developer. This system will define all the colors, typography, spacing and sizing, as well as specifications for any other element. And uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you uh, how to tackle two of these sections, buttons and links, and icons and images. So let's begin with buttons and links. If you've watched any of the other uh, two tutorials in this series, uh, this process will, uh, will be very familiar. If you haven't, you will find links to those uh, down below, and I encourage you to uh, check those out first. Regardless, uh, for the buttons and links page, I'm going to start by defining a frame. I'm going to call it buttons and links. I'm going to add an auto layout to it. 32 pixel distance between elements, 64 pixel padding, direction, vertical. And actually, I'm going to do these separately. So this uh, will just be for the buttons. And I'm going to duplicate this. And this will be for the links. Now, this theme, as you saw in the preview, is very simple. It's a minimal portfolio theme. So we don't have too many buttons or too many links. But the ones we do have, or for the ones we do have, I want to create a hover and an active state as well. So the very first button is this one that uh, will be sitting in the hero. And when we click, it's just going to scroll down to the main content. And I want to create a, um, a hover and an active state for it. So I'm going to take these two, I'm going to shift A, to add auto layout and just uh, push them in a little bit closer. Now, for the second one, I'm basically going to add a fill color, it's going to be the same as the border. And the arrow inside, I'm going to change it to white. So that's the very first step. Now, let me bring this a little bit closer. Uh, the next button will be the uh, the menu the mobile menu, and the mobile menu basically looks like this. It only appears on uh, on small screens. And when I click that, I want to change it to an X. So using uh, my icon set, which is ion icons, you can find it right here at ioniconscom I uh, added this uh, X or this close button. And just like I did previously, I'm going to group these two together. Finally, the last button is the one used for in page navigation on the portfolio page. And that is a uh, simple button. Let me actually align these properly. Uh, that is a simple arrow I meant. It's using the, uh, the, the primary color. And on the hover, I'm simply going to use the dark color. Shift A, bring these together, and we're done with the buttons. Now for the links, we're going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to paste in the link style, and then I'm going to create a hover and an active state for it. So the first one is this one. It's a link that's present in the menu, uh, tab inactive, muted, and pagination. So I'm basically using the same style of link in multiple places. Now I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to say this is for hover slash active, shift a to group these two. And for this bit, I'm going to use the full 100% of the color. The next link is just a standard link. And to create the hover or active state, I'm going to follow the exact same steps. Uh, but this time, I'm going to change its actual 
color, like on the whole link. And then I'll do the same for the other links. I have two more. One is a button link that's just like a standard one, but it has an extra arrow. And this one is reversed compared to the standard link. So the, uh, the default color is red, the accent, and the hover color is the gray, the black. And title link is just like a standard link, but it has uh, different typography properties. It has a bigger font size, different uh, weight. It has a little bit of a letter spacing. But in terms of uh, color, it's exactly the same as a standard link. And with that, our buttons and links are complete or are documented in our design system. Now, whenever a developer needs to see how these need to be coded, they can just open up this page and they can see the default state and then the hover or active state. If I, as a developer, or as a designer, excuse me, or any other designer that uh, gets a hold of this file and wants to create a new page, can come back to this um, design system page, you can see that, okay, a button link looks something like this. So he can just grab it from here, paste it in the new page, and um, be good to go. Now, let's uh, look at the final page, the icons and images. For this, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of what I did here. So let's start with icons. Basically, I create a frame for each icon size. In my design, I'm using icons that are 24 by 24 and 32 by 32. And I just, in here, I place all of the icons that I use in my design or that I might be using in the future. As far as images go, I document them in the following way. So regular images, I say that they are automatic in width and the height is calculated based on a 16.9 ratio on large images. Smaller images have a different height. So we need to check the other pages of our design system uh, to see exactly how they look like. I do offer an example of how an image should look like. And I also explain how contained images should look like. So these are placed in a container with a solid background and the image itself has a drop shadow. Uh, the image can also have a caption and I also show how the caption looks like and how it's positioned to the left below the image spaced at 32 pixels from the image. I also specify how the logo should look like. I give it precise dimensions here. So 48 pixels in height on desktop, 40 pixels on mobile. And of course it has a proportional width. Now in here, you should specify or document all the image types and the icons that you're gonna use. In my case, because it's such a simple theme, I just have these two icon types and these two images. If you have multiple images or multiple image types, make sure you reference them here as well. And how this looks like is really up to you. I chose to do an auto layout on these frames because it's much easier to add text. For example, if I want to duplicate this text or add more, the, uh, the parent frame resizes automatically. In the end, it's really up to you how you um, design these pages, but Figma gives you some uh, great tools to do that. All right, and that's how you can uh, create the specifications for buttons, links, icons, and images in uh, Figma. Now, this video completes a three-part series on um, creating a Figma design system, where in each tutorial, I showed you bits and pieces from that design system. Uh, in the first video, I showed you uh, certain parts 
uh, I believe it was uh, typography, spacing and sizing uh, from a design system for a gardening theme. In the second video, I showed you um, colors and forms um, for a uh, news slash magazine style theme. And in this one, I showed you two other parts of a design system for this minimal portfolio theme. So I hope um, you enjoyed this series and you learned something useful. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi Purdila, and until next time, take care.